Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at least on my review of Daryl by Jackie S. So I understand this has been doing pretty well on TikTok. It's published by Clash Books, um, and I know the people who run Clash Books are sort of internet friends. Um, so it's called See Again, So Much Love. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say at the time of filming, I'm only about a third of the way through, so it's almost going to be more like a reading vlog. I'll uh, start with what I've got today, and then we'll continue tomorrow. Dane reads. Daryl Cook is a man who seems to have everything. A quiet home in Western Oregon, a beautiful wife, and a lot of friends to fuck her while he watches. But as he explores the cook-holding lifestyle, he finds himself tugging at threads that threaten to unravel his marriage, his town, and himself. With empathy and humour, debut author Jackie S crafts a kaleidoscopic meditation on marriage, manhood, dreams, basketball, sobriety, and the secret lives of Oregonians. So, it's got a cracking opening paragraph. You live vicariously through celebrities. I live vicariously through the guys who fuck my wife. But sure, okay, I'm the weird one. Let me ask you this, do you watch sports at all? I could ask what's the point if you aren't the one playing, but it isn't exactly a fair question. And he wonders if it's true that they're more enlightened about cuckolding in France. People are always saying that. Um, and I just find that interesting because I'm interested in French, because I'm learning French. Um, and this is kind of told in like a series of like little vignettes, I guess, from Daryl's point of view. Um, so here, I thought this was good, uh, the start of gross. Something I was thinking about, if you'd never heard of sex, it'd sound pretty fucked up, right? You'd probably wonder if it was safe. Maybe you'd think it was gross. But somehow, we mostly all come around. And we figure out how to do it, at least passably. Is that the species at work in us? It's surprising that there isn't more of a range of responses. Everybody wants to stick it in, except me. I want to watch a guy stick it in. So here I am watching Bill fuck my wife. I can't do it like Bill, not any more than I can play like LeBron, but I did what I could and it was alright for a while, before we really knew what was possible. That's what's different about me maybe. I want to know. And Dara says, I turned 11 last year. I always like to say that because I was born on a leap day and I only get a birthday every four years. It's more like I'm 45, I just don't have birthday parties. There's a chapter titled Psychosomatic Addict Insane, which are prodigy lyrics, great stuff. And we get this little bit of him musing to himself. Maybe it's just because he's British, like Hannibal Lecter. Is Hannibal Lecter even British? Is Clive? Hannibal Lecter is fucking my wife. Okay, I hope he doesn't eat her. Or me. Um, I don't know if the character, I can't remember if the character in the books was British. I think he was American. Um, Anthony Hopkins, who played him in the movies, is British. And he says, uh, I read The Selfish Gene a few years ago and it really got to me. I think maybe this is what it was about. A lot of the guys on the cuckolding forum I use talk about it. I wish I knew more about evolution in general. That's by Richard Dawkins. I have read that as well. And that's the book, I think 1978. And he coined the, the, the term meme, which we now use for internet memes. Uh, it was originally, Richard Dawkins was using it to explain things in like um, evolution, basically. Uh, so a meme originally was like a tune or something like that, or a, an expression that got picked up and shared around. And he, um, he reaches out to a transgender woman called Uthun. And he says, I wonder if she'll write back. Another downside of having a stupid rare name is that if you have any kind of online profile at all, people can always find you. But I'm happy for it this time. Yeah, that happens with me with Dane Cobain. There's no other Dane Cobain, you know? And, uh, so, what was her name? Uthun. Uh, she has this huge theory about the Despicable Me franchise that I can't do justice. Minions, the little yellow cartoon monsters. Something about how much money they spent on marketing it. It was hard to believe they spent a billion dollars on that, or maybe it was a little less. Why? Seems like they sell themselves. Kids love them. And just a great line here as well. Sometimes Uthun is a lot more annoying on the internet than she was in person. But I think that's true of most people. I think it is. Certainly true of me. Another great opening line for a chapter here is, Are there any songs about being a cuckold besides Mr. Brightside by The Killers? Never thought about it that way, but yes, you can interpret that song that way. It's one of those songs you never interpret. You just sing when you're pissed with your friends. Uh, there's a reference to when Daryl was in middle school. He, sa he says, When I got too cocky about science fiction, I'd been reading an Isaac Asimov book called Foundation and Empire. I talked about it like it was real science and got cold on it hard. What are the odds? I mean, I was 11 and this guy must have been 30 and he was a science fiction fan. But to this day, it smarts. Like, maybe I should have died that day. And um, I thought this bit was just interesting as well. Um, obviously, I thought a lot of this was interesting, but I just, again, I'm going to read this, read this bit out. They let me watch their sex this afternoon, and I have to admit that Kit does a better job with Mindy than Bill or Clive or Patrick or Greg or any of the others. Dim different emphasis. But as someone watching, it's like I don't have the same vicarious athletic enjoyment. I said thanks and left after a little bit. Watching Bill fuck my wife, that's like watching an athlete win gold. 
Watching Kit is like watching a computer win a chess tournament. Not because she does it without feeling, that's not what I mean. It just seems so effortlessly great, but not in a way that I can connect to, even enough to activate my usually charged feelings of inadequacy. And that's what makes the thing go for me, that's the motor. And um, he goes to, uh, what was it, uh, to, the, to a pharmacy uh, um, to get the um, emergency contraceptive pill while wearing a dress. And we get, thinking back now to Christmas Eve, I was wearing the sissy dress and Mindy sent me down to the pharmacy to pick up plan B. No problem, I'll change. No? Like this. I had to go to four different pharmacies while fully dressed, but I got it. I drove up to Corvallis, but it was still humiliating. No, Mom, it's not for me, it's for my wife, yes. Then I got this lecture about safe sex. I had to interrupt. Look, I said, I always use a condom, and besides, I'm sterile. But why? Then she stared for a long time and checked me out. And then there's a reference to him listening to Hawkwind, great band. And he shaves his arms and he says it had a subtle but for me tremendous effect. I don't know why that worked so much magic for me. It's not like I was ever a hairy guy. But I think it's similar to the way a room turns bright after you sweep the floor. Even if it wasn't that dirty to begin with. And this was interesting because this is true. I I've read this somewhere else that people don't look in mirrors in dreams. Um, and he says, I had another dream where I was looking in the mirror, which it occurs to me now I've never done in a dream. A mirror seems like it's just a little too complicated for the sleeping brain to hold together. And that's how it was here. Nothing was wrong exactly, but the details kept shifting in ways that didn't make sense. I was staring at myself in the mirror, but it wasn't myself at all, it was another guy. And then it wasn't a mirror at all, but a window, and I wasn't looking out, but looking in. And I really like this bit, he said, uh, cause this is, I kind of relate to this, and also I fucking love this song. And he says he, he heard it in a movie as well, which is weird, because that's where I remember first listening to the song, and I can't remember what movie. There's a Bob Dylan song where he says, it takes a woman like your kind to find the man in me. So is your kind a slightly hippie goth aesthetic in a spiritually realized poly chick? He probably means a different kind. I think that's why the song works though. It's nothing to do with types. And that does sound like my type as well. And there's a reference to, wasn't there something about vampires not going in when they're not invited? Um, and I have a poem called Why I'm Like a Vampire, which begins, One, I can't come in unless you let me in. I must be asked to pass the threshold or I'll stand outside in the rain. Two, sunlight hurts my eyes. I don't rise and shine. I lie awake all night. I don't know, I can't remember how it goes after that. Oh, it was my cat taking a piss. I wondered what that weird sound was. And I like this line here as well. He says, I was complaining that you can't bring lube through the airport anymore. And Mindy laughed a little. She reached into a purse and produced a travel bottle. Kip found it before their big trip to Northampton. Very nice. So yeah, Daryl by Jackie S. Uh, I like the ending to this as well. I will say like both, it's impressive both for being uh, a first novel and for being an indie book. I, I don't think you can necessarily tell that from reading it. Um, maybe from the book itself, just in the fact that all indie books look roughly the same because they're all basically printed by KDP or Ingram Spark. Um, but it's really well done for an indie novel. I mean, the cover's great, interior layout's great. It's just some good stuff. Um, this for me was a 4.5 out of 5 and it's in my top four books of the year. There's like these four, so far, I mean, it's only February 10th. Um, so in fact, it's one of the top books of the quarter, but you know, um, there are four towards the top that are really um, out, you know, outstanding in their field or whatever. So we have this, uh, Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, Billy Summers by Stephen King, and The Card Turner by Louis Sackar. All of those I thought have been fantastic. Um, but this is possibly, it's number two or number three. So yeah, good stuff, I would recommend it. So there we have it, that's what I made of Daryl, a novel by Jackie S. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.